All right, so today I'm here working on a 2010 Ford Taurus, and right now, currently scanning it, and it has a crank but no start. So we're gonna be trying to figure out exactly what is causing that, and hopefully get this sorted out for the customer. Now we do have some codes. Um, unfortunately, there are nothing too useful. The customer said they did a hard reset on the ECU, whatever that, whatever that means for to them. So now we're just kind of left with nothing that's telling us anything useful. So I'm gonna do some tests, try to activate the fuel pump uh, from the controls on here. See if I can hear that kick on. And then we'll pop the hood and take a look at what it looks like under there. All right, so right here, uh, we are in the fuel pump activation test. And we're gonna try to turn it on and see if you can hear it. And it came on. So uh, we know the fuel pump is at least pumping so i'm just going to assume that we have fuel i'm going to go to the parameters and see exactly what's happening at this moment i may be able to see something erratic currently like a mass airflow or something that's just bouncing around and not really telling the engine computer it's anything too useful so and right now i'm just going to try to crank it and we're sitting here looking at the mass airflow uh, and i went and pulled the crank sensor camshaft sensor uh, synchronization to see if you know it'll tell me anything And that sounds almost like it has no compression. So I'm gonna pull out a compression tester and pull a spark plug and, God, that thing's annoying. I'm gonna pull out a compression tester and see what uh, we figure out. Now, oftentimes whenever you're looking at something like this, you're gonna look for clues of uh, things that could show start to a problem. And you know, I already got told that the VCT actuators or VVT, whatever they call them on this vehicle, got replaced so I can see those are new. Um, but I also noticed a new coil pack and I mean everything else looks pretty normal at this point So like I said, I'm just gonna pull one of these coil packs out and compression test it First thought is that plug gap is massive So I'm gonna go check the gap on that and then check what the spec should be All right, so right here we have the spark plug and we have 50 thousandths worth of a uh, feeler gauge and the spec is 51 thousandths so just putting this in there, uh, it goes between the electrode. So I'd say that our plug gap is good. It is is massive for whatever reason. I'm not sure why, but it's just what they, they want it to be. So next we're going to continue on with the compression test. So as you can see from that compression test, it looks like we have no compression on at least the cylinder one or whatever cylinder this is, this maybe cylinder two. I think it's cylinder one. I'm gonna go ahead and, I haven't used this actually in a diagnostic sense yet. So I'm going to actually go put this on my truck and compression test it and see what, see what we get. Make sure that it's accurate. First of all, let's take a moment to admire how bad my spark plugs are. Yeah. I need to change this. I've, I've had them in a box for like a year and just haven't done it. So uh, now I'm going to pull the fuel pump relay. So, uh, you know, it doesn't start up hopefully while I'm trying to do the compression test. So as you can see, my engine this is mirrored, but it's way over here in the 200 area. So that uh, other is not looking too good. So I'm going to go ahead and inform them of my findings thus far and we'll see where we want to go from there i went and did a relative compression test looking at it nothing is too concerning um, which means that if i go back and look at the pressure tester and it says 30 psi that just means that all the cylinders dead uh, which is what it sounds like to me it's what it sounded like from the beginning but uh, you never want to assume too much so I'm gonna go look at the compression tester and see see what we figure out. So pretty much all the relative compression test tells me is that all the cylinders are within a maximum of 3% difference of 60 PSI, which means they're all dead. So I assume that at some point the chain came off the crank probably a little bit and jumped a tooth or a few and uh, bent some of the valves in the head, but I'm just assuming, so yeah. So that one was kind of interesting when I started researching a little bit because I'm like, I don't know, can a bad starter, like a weak starter cause low compression? 
and some people were kind of saying they were. It kind of feels like one of those old timer things where like the older guys are like, yeah, of course it will. And then uh, some of the younger guys are like, no, it won't. Um, and some people were stating that like if you test airflow on an engine with uh, no compression, like you take the spark plugs out, you, uh, you measure the RPMs of the starter, it will turn less for some reason because they said that for whatever reason it takes more energy to turn an engine with no compression than it does to turn one with compression. So that's something I didn't know. But you know, I kind of, I, I just said, I don't think it's a starter, man. Some people say it might be, we could throw that in there. The, one, the good thing is if it is a bad engine, you can always swap the starter over to the new engine. So it's not like you're, you know, out some part that's deep in a bad engine. So there's that, but you know, I just ended up saying that, you know, it's got no compression with this specific engine, you know, it's like 11 hours to do a timing job on it. And that's just to throw the chain on it and then see if it, it'll start, which there's a, a possibility, you know, it's not like that's improbable, but um, that's to see if it happens. And then, you know, after paying that, there's a very good chance it won't. And, you know, if it comes to that, then, uh, you know, then you're just paying an engine anyway. So I hate whenever I have to tell the customer that. Uh, I'm just kind of rambling at this point, but I hate whenever I have to say, ah, oh, yeah, your engine's, your engine's done. Um, Cause you know, I like being able to show up somewhere and, and uh, with a car that isn't running and then get it running, you know, that's a good feeling, but getting there and, telling him that there's there's no way it's just not a not a good feeling so yeah so uh if you found this video interesting let me know by leaving a like and uh, if you don't want to hear me ramble anymore go to comment and tell me to shut up and other than that i'd like to thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time